everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining me for 30 minutes of feel good news. Let's start off nine on the positive side with a story that might put a smile on your face. A 75 year old North Carolina man has made a huge impact on his community. All it took was a hello and a wave to drivers. John Lee has this touching story. When I first got it, nobody even said good afternoon. Nobody said good morning, nothing. You've probably heard that there's only so much one person can do. But then I'm coming. you meet someone like Luciano Rivera. Just about every day, he walks outside his home in the Madison Park neighborhood to generate a wave of goodwill. Hello, hello. He spends hours a day just saying hello. Just a simple wave has turned into something special. How you doing? I am doing well. Good, stay well. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Adios, my mom. As you can see, he's got a festive hat on, but these aren't simply season's greetings. Hello, hello, he does this year round to the delight of passers-by like Preston Henderson. We all have stuff. And for a brief second, all that stuff goes away. And there's a nice, Little man standing here waving. Oh, look at that. Hello. Mr. Rivera started doing this a couple of years ago as a ploy to get drivers to slow down on Seneca Place. I did not like the way that people used to run through here like wild, wild animals. Slow down. But in the process, he creates a sense of community. Nobody even say good afternoon. Nobody say good morning. Nothing. He just go, go, go. Now I slow them down. Now they can see here's another side to the story. This is his way of replicating the same neighborhood vibe he grew up with in Puerto Rico. They slow down, they pull over, they talk to you. And that's why we shouldn't underestimate Hello. the power of one and the impact of a single waving hand. My mother always Hello. told me growing up, she said, you need to make sure that you make everybody's day better when they leave you. Hello. And that's what he definitely does. Hello. How you doing? Hello. John Lee, Fox 46. Hello, baby. It's just that simple. One Pitt County student hasn't been able to attend class since the start of the pandemic, but new technology is making it possible for him to go without leaving home. Check this out. It's called a Vigo. Madison Steedman has a rare lung condition. He hasn't been able to go to school over coronavirus concerns. He uses this robot called a Vigo. It allows him to move around the classroom, be seen by his classmates and ask questions and approach the teacher. Mason's mom says she and her son felt incredibly lucky when the school district offered this technology to them a couple of months ago. What a boy doesn't want a robot. <laughs> he he wants to go back to school, but this is a way that he can interact and feel like he's participating in class rather than like just a computer. Mason's mom says more than anything, he wants to go back to school in person, of course, but this opportunity has definitely helped put a smile on his face in the meantime. There is a note on a bench in a Charlotte Park that's getting a lot of attention. It was left by a woman who says a couple helped save her life. Maureen Wirtz reports. On an afternoon walk, it's easy to keep going, keep pushing. Oh my God. But sometimes Aww. it's okay to pause. To the couple that saved my life here. Because that's important too. This is for you, everyone else. There are some great people in this world. I hope you meet some in 2022 and are a great person to someone else. Sealed against the weather and hung up by a nail. I'm glad it kept the rain off. A note. Dear Mr. Red Shirt and Ms. Gray Shirt, Thank you so much for your kindness. Addressed to two strangers. Makes me want to cry. <laughs> Can't even help them. From one person. You started off 2022 with one hell of a good deed in your debt, the girl on the bench. Who just wanted to say thank you. I am the girl on the bench. That may be what she calls herself in the letter, but Julie Horsting is mostly grateful. And just the fact that they were willing, right? Because any people could have walked down this path and either not lived close or, you know, not been willing to talk to a stranger on a bench during a pandemic. <laughs> on New Year's Day, 
Julie, who has type 1 diabetes, walked a little longer than she planned. Her blood sugar got so low, she had to sit down and try to figure out what to do. It was just exactly what I needed in that moment, and um, it might not have felt like a lot to them, but it was a lot to me. Out of nowhere, a couple stopped by to figure out what was wrong. And when she told them, one ran to grab her a juice. In that moment, it was just an of course and not a big deal. And, and why wouldn't we help? And um, But to me, you know, that was absolutely the best orange juice I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> Julie hasn't found the couple. Absolutely, they helped save my life. She hopes the letter will, but it's doing more than that. It was ironically a perfect place for me to have ended up. Because it's the perfect handwritten reminder to take a break and look for the good because it's out there. I knew when I was just and that was Maureen Worse reporting. The Greensboro Science Center Aquarium now has a name for this cute African penguin chick. The public deciding between Newton, Niffler, and Piper. And I feel like we need a drum roll for this and they chose Niffler. You can see Niffler at the Science Center in a couple of months once Niffler's swimming is strong enough. And take a look at this. Three southern sea otters are having the time of their lives, clearly, right, at this zoo. What seems like just tubs of water turned into a water playground for them. Zookeepers say Juno, Lincoln, and Unisushi spent all afternoon squeezing and barreling into the tubs. Now imagine walking down the sidewalk and running into this creature. That gerbil in a robot suit is a 3D chalk sketch from the imagination of David Zinn. He's a popular street artist behind these creations, all made from chalk and charcoal. His mission to show you you don't need fancy supplies to make art. He gets paid to create his art commissions worldwide from a village square in Germany to the streets of Laguna Beach in California. Jamie Yukis caught up with Zinn to see how he brings his ideas to life. What do you look for? What's a canvas on the street? Oh, anything. Uh, to most people, even. this might look like an ordinary street. But to David Zinn, it offers endless possibilities. There's strange little posts in the ground. Sometimes no one can tell me why they're there, so they might be there for this person, you know? Just, just for you for to me. start drawing. Yeah, maybe, who knows? For more than 20 years, the Michigan native worked as a freelance commercial artist until a box of colorful sidewalk chalk convinced him to leave his day job. Oh, but that is a squirrel's tail. The 52-year-old now creates whimsical 3D drawings right on the spot, using everything from manhole covers to weeds and street cracks as his inspiration. A few minutes ago, this was just a, a patch and it wanted to be a hole in the ground. Yeah, the I see the hole in the ground, yeah. yeah. So it's working? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide to start doing art with chalk, of all things? The honest answer is that I was looking for an excuse to be outside on a nice day. That was how it started. That's it? Um, yeah. We all <laughs> seem to have chalk in our house. It's just very easy to come by, which is one of the things that I think makes it a good thing to make art with because it's not precious. Philomena, the flying pig, is just one of the characters that often pops up. There was, and is, <laughs> one perfectly flat small brick right here that is perfect for a pig head. So that's where the pig had to go. And yep. this is where the window ledge had to go because it couldn't go anywhere else. So what kind of chalk do you use? Anything I can get my hands on. It doesn't take long for Zinn to attract a crowd from longtime fans. Look at me. I always get tears in my eyes when I see it. I just love it. It just makes me so happy. To first time onlookers. He was like checking out the concrete over there, the concrete over here. It's like, what's going on? I never seen anyone doing this before. The ground was perfectly dry. If Zinn isn't striking up conversations with real people. Is that what you want to be? He can often be seen talking to the characters he's bringing to life. Where are your arms? Well, I loved how he kind of explained his personal thought and his personal connection to it, which made me really feel like this really comes from his heart. This stuff isn't pre-planned. It's definitely from the heart. And I think he might be done. Still, even the most heartfelt piece of art can get washed away with just a few raindrops. But Zinn says that's all, well, part of the draw. Famous works of art hanging in museums get seen by thousands of people every day. But this, you could be in among the dozens of people who get to see this while it exists. That's pretty special. Is there a lesson in all this for people? <laughs> I hope so. 
I think that's part of what this is meant to do, to celebrate the fact that we walk through spaces on our way to somewhere else all the time and don't really take the time to notice where we are. And it's helped me a lot to actually appreciate every single place that I am for what it can do. Yeah, that'll do, at least until it rains. Creations are pretty neat, and that was Jamie Yukis reporting. We want to hear all the good things that are happening in your community. Think you have an inspiring story or one that will make someone smile? Send your story ideas to the email you see right there on the screen. You can also reach out to me directly on Facebook or on Twitter. It was raining real hard, and a, a fish hit the ground. And I said, it's raining fish. You heard that right, raining fish. More on what that man says he saw fall from the sky. And the sweet and special bond between this little girl and a mailman. For children, heroes and idols can be everywhere. For one girl in Nebraska, a new friendship started when the boredom of quarantined sparked a routine of watching for the mail. A newfound friend was driving the truck. Ellis Wetsley shares more about their special bond. It's a story that started through this window. <laughs> At the beginning of the pandemic, four-year-old Dorothea spent her mornings waiting for the mail. Thank you. And then eventually she started wanting to go out and say hello. And we left him a few, she drew him a picture and some left some notes. Um, and their friendship has really grown from there and it's been such a sweet um, thing to watch. That mailman is Chris Lenhoff. He tells me he first noticed her waving through the window. Now his mail truck is adorned with things Tortillas made him. Around when the pandemic started, I noticed her looking out the window a lot, so I would just wave. And uh, she then it was waving back and then her mom caught me one day and uh, was telling me about her infatuation with the mail truck, and here we are. The pair have a daily routine. It's waiting at the window or on the porch for his 10 a.m. arrival. Trinkets, treats, and handmade gifts are often in the mix, like today's. Dorothea drew this photo of her and Chris. She tells me it's a special one of them hugging. And I even made him a mail truck that out of parlor beads. Chris tells me Dorothea is a special highlight in his day and often he takes extra care to greet most because he's not sure how their day is going, but hopes to make a difference. It's her and it's everybody. You know, a lot of people, I might be their only interaction. And that was Ellis Whitsley reporting. This was an extra special day for Dorothea as well because she got to see Chris twice, a treat her mom says she was looking forward to all day. A mail carrier saved an Idaho woman who had fallen on snow and ice and couldn't get back up. The incident all caught on camera. The wind chill was about five below when Linda Holton went out to get her mail. A surveillance camera shows the moment Holton slipped and fell. Unable to get up, she spent 19 minutes on the ground until Chris Meyer eventually arrived on the mail route. If it was my mother or my grandma, I'd, I'd want someone to help her out, and there was nobody there to help her. I'd never witnessed anything like that before um, while I was at work, but uh, I'm glad I was able, able to help her out and that she's okay, mainly. Halton says she has no serious injuries from the fall or from being out in those frigid temperatures. One six-year-old entrepreneur from Arlington, Virginia, is aiming to make the world a better place. Zoe Robinson hosts her own YouTube channel called Zoe TV, and she's published eight books since January of 2020. Her goal? To spread positivity, creativity, and joy around the world. Zoe's videos from her YouTube channel have been used in D.C. public schools and the Smithsonian Institute, and her books are used in daycares and schools across the East Coast. I help create positive and creativity around the world. I help people, and if they're sad, I make them happier. One of my books are affirmations, so if people are, like, bullying, then they can see affirmations to know that they're special, too. We need more Zoe's in the world. As for the future, Zoe says she hopes to create thousands of more books to continue to spread her positivity. 
The Titans coming together to help a fan find his custom wedding ring after he lost it at an NFL game. Chad Davis didn't realize his ring was missing until he was an hour away from the stadium. He immediately, like anybody would, went into panic mode. Since he couldn't go back and look for it, his son encouraged him to post about it on Twitter. He's part of a community of Titans fans and thought they could help. Little did he know, the president of the Titans, Burke Nihill, got involved. He had a security and team search Davis's seat, and in the dark, they found it. Davis shared what it was like when he found out they went above and beyond to get his ring back. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's why I love this team, to be honest. I mean, that's why, that's why I have this. I mean, it's that simple. I love this team. Great thing to do there. We know dogs can do a whole lot ahead on Nine on the Positive Side. How man's best friend is helping children become comfortable with an important skill. Welcome back. How cute is this? In North Dakota, children are getting the chance to read with a little encouragement from a furry friend. This furry friend, reading education assistance dogs are at this public library to help kids feel more comfortable when reading. Kids or families can spend 15 minutes reading to the dogs. The children's librarian says the therapy dogs help put them at ease. The kiddos, they feel judged, they feel like not comfortable, and the dogs just give them a really calm environment. And honestly, the dogs love listening to the books and love the kids so much. The dogs are available on a first come, first serve basis. This story is really unusual and interesting. A couple weeks ago, it was raining fish. Yeah, raining fish for a few minutes in Texas. Now check this out. James Ostris works at a car dealership. He says he and his coworker looked outside to see fish falling from the sky. There was a loud crack of thunder and we opened up the bay door and I looked outside and it, uh, it was raining real hard and a, a, a fish hit the ground. And I said, it's raining fish. And Brad was like, no, it's not. And I was like, no, it really is. And fish were dropping here and everywhere. Raining fish is believed to be the result of a rare weather event when a water spout moving over water sucks up small creatures like fish and frogs and carries them along until the water spout loses steam. Coming up on Nine on the Positive Side, there's always a first time for everything. More on this Panda Cubs first snowfall. All right, check this out. This is really cute. One giant panda cub was a little wary during his first encounter with snow. While the 16 month old plowed face first into the fresh powder. The panda really embraced it, I think. The cub even rolled around. It's just adorable. That's all the time we have for you today. One last thing before we go. We want to show you this manatee's first swim. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone.